Well, we sure have spent a lot of time and energy trying to write the equation of a tangent line. And uh, you've probably had tangent lines coming out your ears. You've seen tangent lines in your sleep. Uh, but now, uh, you know, we've got to ask ourselves the question, you know, what is a tangent line useful for? Is it really good for anything? And we're going to try to um, introduce you to one of the useful uh, practices of a tangent line today, and that's called local linearization. And basically what's going to boil down here tonight is we want to be able to use tangent lines to approximate um, difficult functions. Um, and a good word for approximate is to simply estimate. Um, you know, we're going to get an answer that's very close. And, you know, there are certain times as engineers where we don't need a super precise answer. Uh, we just need a very, you know, a, a good estimate or a good approximation. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to a picture that's pretty overwhelming at first, but if we break it down into smaller pieces, I think it'll actually come together and uh, make real good sense. And this is basically the picture that I'm going to visualize as we're solving the problems later on to kind of give what we're doing some meaning and to, to make it more you know, fruitful, so to speak. But uh, all I want you to do right now is to begin, as you begin your sketch and you've got your axes drawn, is we're going to draw this function f of x right here. And, uh, well, that's not too bad. I actually traced it pretty good. Uh, so we'll call him f of x. And then what we wanted to do is we picked a random point c. And we decided, you know what, I want to draw a tangent line, a line tangent to f at that particular point. And so this right here is called the point of tangency. Just a fancy phrase that we have, the point of tangency. And um, so what we've done is what you'll notice is that tangent line stays really close to the curve. I mean, in fact, they intersect perfectly at that one point. And then as I deviate away from point C, you know, the curve and the line stay pretty close to each other within this interval. And because they're staying so close to each other, their y-coordinates are virtually identical. Now you'll notice as I, as I go further and further away from the point of tangency, the separation between the two graphs gets greater and greater and greater. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Uh, more specifically, we're going to say that, uh, you know, we're going to pick um, a point off of C, just a little ways down the line. And we're going to say, you know, what if I wanted F of c plus h, but f was a really hairy function, and plugging, you know, a number c plus h into that function was obnoxious and undoable. We we'll say, you know what, we'll plug it into the tangent line, which is a linear function, and it's easier to number crunch and manipulate. Well, here's, you know, here's the true answer that we're shooting for, and here's what the tangent line would tell us, and what you'll notice is it's pretty close, okay? The gap between those two points is the air that's involved. And um, as long as the air stays pretty small, we're going to be happy. But anyway, let's cut to it here. I got this sentence down here, and it says, we're going to f we find the tangent line at a point, and we use this equation of the tangent line as an approximation. Okay. Again, if you like the word estimation better, go ahead and use it as an approximation for the function. All right, I, I brought in this, this blank screen just so we could kind of recreate the graph that I threw at you that was a little overwhelming on the last slide. But anyway, so we've got our original curve, and he's called f of x, and we just picked a random point here on the x-axis called c, and we said, you know what, I want a tangent line at point c. So in order to write the equation of that line, I needed a few things. Um, I needed the y-coordinate, of course, which is going to be f of c. So the ordered pair is c comma f of c at that little point right here. And, uh, you know, my big goal is to write the equation of that line, so I'm going to come up with the slope, which is going to be f prime of c. So all together now, I'm going to say y minus f of c equals f prime of c quantity x minus c. So that obnoxious thing is the equation of my tangent line right here. And if I solve for y, I'm going to get y equals f of c which is kind of like my starting y value, plus f prime of c times the quantity x minus c. Okay, so this is what we call local linearization right there. All it is is a glorified version of the tangent line. The only thing special we did is we did solve for y, and the y values that the tangent line produces is going to be very close to the y values that the original function produces. 
All right, before we have our discussion about air and we fill in this uh, these blanks and so forth here, I want to get just another picture on our paper just so we're crystal clear about who C is and who X is. All right, so here's F of X. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a random point C here. So let's say that's C. And I wanted to draw a line tangent to the curve right there. All right. And so C represents the point of tangency, F of C is the Y coordinate, and F prime of C is the slope. Well, what we've got here is, let's say we picked a, a random X value down here, and we wanted to approximate, you know, what is the value of X, you know, and then the separation between the two curves would represent the air. So let's go ahead and fill in these blanks up here. The Basically, the closer X is to C, and remember C is the point of tangency, Oops, there we go, something like that. Okay, the more accurate our approximation is. In other words, the air gets smaller. So in other words, we're going to kind of put some limits on how far we let X wander away. You know, we want to stay as close to C as possible. Um, you know, if I pick these points right here, X sub 1 would be better than X sub 2, and X sub 2 would be better than X sub 3. Well, here's my favorite question to address, and I think it's a very useful question, and it's a question that shows up a lot on the AP exam, and they basically say, does our tangent line over or underestimate the given function? And based off of all the pictures that I've shown you so far tonight, every tangent line we have in our notebook underestimates the function f of x. Um, for instance, let's see, so we basically had this kind of a function, and our tangent line did this, and so the tangent line underestimated the actual value up here. The way that we're going to tell is we're going to examine the concavity of f of x. In this particular case, you notice that f of x was concave up, therefore, we the tangent line underestimated the actual function's value. Whoa, what am I spelling? Okay, underestimated. However, let's flip that scenario around. Let's maybe draw a function that's concave down. And you'll notice, as long as we're concave down, it doesn't matter whether I put the tangent line here, maybe I put it on top, maybe I put it off to the side over here. In those situations, the tangent line is guaranteed to lie above the curve. And so we would say, therefore, if f of x is concave down, therefore the tangent line is guaranteed to overestimate the actual function's value. So it's really all about concavity. Um, whether the curve's increasing or decreasing has no bearing on the over or underestimation of the function. It's all about the concavity. Well, we've been dabbling in trying to set this up, and we're ready to take a look at an example of what we might see uh, tomorrow in class or on a future quiz or test. And our first example says, let's find the local linear approximation for this function. Basically, what you need to understand is that this phrase right here, all they're saying is write the equation of a tangent line. That's all it is. It's nothing new. It's just some new vocabulary. And um, now they use a little different notation. They use x sub 0 to say um, our c value, okay, aka the point of tangency. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, if, um, if the x-coordinate is 1, then the y-coordinate, as I plug it into the function, is also a 1. And the derivative looks like it's 3x squared. So therefore, my slope is going to be a 3 by the time I substitute a 1 into there. Put this all together, I've got y minus 1 equals 3 quantity x minus 1. In other words, we're going to clean these up a little bit today. I think 3x minus 2. And what's going to happen is we can now use this equation to approximate you know, things like you know, what's f of 1.1 or what's f of 1.2 or what's f of 0.9 because you know, 1.1, 1.2, or 0.9 are all really close to the point of tangency. Just to recreate what we've done so far here, you know, here's what f of x looks like, x cubed, and you know, there's x equals 1, so here's our tangent line that we just created, and we're pretty darn close to that function. You know, as long as we stay in the neighborhood of x equals 1. You know, I would not want to use this tangent line to approximate, you know, f of negative 2. You know what I'm saying? Because negative 2 is over here, and the two functions are, well, yeah, they shouldn't be very close to each other. They typically aren't. It would be a poor approximation.
Okay, our next example, they want us to find the local linear approximation for the function y equals 1 over x. Um, that y there, you could just pretend that that's an f of x. Don't let that scare you. And they want us to do a point of tangency at x equals 2 and then use that tangent line to estimate f of 2.1. So here we go. All we're going to do, remember, as soon as they said local linear approximation, I'm thinking, right, the equation of a tangent line. That's all I'm thinking. So let's see, we know that f of 2 is equal to 1 half. We know that f prime of x is equal to negative x to the negative 2, otherwise negative 1 over x squared. And if I find the slope specifically at 2, I'm going to get negative 1 fourth. All right, put that all together, we're going to get a tangent line, y minus 1 half equals negative 1 fourth quantity x minus 2. And now I'm going to use this tangent line to estimate what f of 2.1 is. And so I'm just going to, I'm actually going to make my substitution right now. And I encourage you to do so rather than distributing that 1 fourth because 2.1 minus 2 is pretty friendly. y minus a half. And this is very typical number crunching on the non-calculator section. They're going to expect us to be able to do this. The 0.1 that I got is really 1 tenth. So what does that give me? I've got negative 1 40th plus a half, which would be 20 fortieths. So I'm estimating, you know, I'm getting what here? I'm getting y equals 19 fortieths. And so we could say f of 2.1 is approximately 19 fortieths. Visualizing what we've done here, um, if I graphed the function 1 over x, it would look like this in quadrants 1 and 3. We could say x equals 2 is right there. And you'll notice this tangent line is crazy close to that curve, you know, especially at 2.1. So our approximation is great. Now, because the function is concave up at that moment, our approximation is an underestimate based off of the concavity of the original curve. Now, so far in the first two examples, you're probably wondering why go through all the pain of getting a tangent line. The original functions themselves were pretty friendly, you know, and why do it waste your time with an approximation if you can just go get the real thing? And I'd agree with you. We were just kind of building our basics and getting an idea of where we were going with this. Now, in this particular one, I think you'll find it more useful because if someone asked me to find the sine of 0.1, I wouldn't have a clue where to start. So we're going to use local lin linear approximations to help us on this path. So we're going to write the equation of a tangent line for the sine function. Okay, so let's assume that f of x is our sine function. And um, let's say we want to do a point of tangency at 0 because 0 is extremely close to the point 1 we're attempting to approximate. And therefore, f of 0 in this case is simply 0. f prime of x is the cosine function. And f prime evaluated at 0 gives us a 1. All right, we'll put all this together. We've got ourselves a nice tangent line here. y minus 0 equals 1 quantity x minus 0. Now, if I can substitute my point 1 in for the x, look at how easy this turns out to be. We end up getting simply y equals point 0.1 itself. So we've just proven that the sine of point 0.1 radians is approximately point 0.1. In other words, don't be afraid to kind of visualize your graph so that we don't lose sight of what we're accomplishing here. We know that our sine curve looks like this, true? Okay. And if I did a tangent line at 0, the tangent line would look like this. And so we've chosen point 0.1, and you'll notice, you'll notice how tight the tangent line is to the curve around x equals 0, which just indicates what a strong predictor or what a good approximation this tangent line is going to be for that sine curve as long as we stay close to the point of tangency, which we did. And so we can say with great confidence that the sine of point 0.1 is very, very close to point 0.1 itself. And it's a slight over uh, estimation because of why. Why is this an overestimation? Well, because the curve at x equals point 0.1 is concave down. And therefore, the tangent line lies above and creates a slight overestimation. All right, one last one to really give you a feel for the usefulness of this method. What if I threw a function called x plus the natural log of 1 plus x at you? And your first instinct's very obnoxious, ugly-looking function. And I needed, as an engineer, I needed to get f of 0 0.2. 
And whatever project I'm working on doesn't necessarily demand a, a super precise answer. I just need to get a ballpark answer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, I'm going to do a tangent line. I'm going to write a, the equation of a tangent line at x equals 0 because 0 is very close to 0 0.2. You know, if I wanted to estimate f of 0.2, it really wouldn't make sense to do a tangent line at 5 because the values aren't that close to each other. Pick the closest one. And so we put it all together. We've decided, let's see, f of 0 is going to be 0 plus the natural log of 1. And, of course, that's 0, so we just get zeros there. F prime of x is going to be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus x. And if I evaluate the derivative at 0, I'm going to get 1 plus 1, which is 2. Okay. I'm going to put this all together. We've got y minus 0 equals 2 quantity x minus 0. In other words, y equals 2x. If I substituted the 0.2 into that, 2 times 0.2 is going to give me 0.4. And I, so I can say with qu quite a bit of confidence that f of 0 0.2 is approximately 0.4. And uh, I don't have this graph readily available, uh, but we could certainly calculate the second derivative without too much pain in order to determine whether the curve is concave up or down when x equals 0.2, and then make a decision about whether 0.4 is an over or an underestimate. So, well, I hope we had some fun tonight. Uh, I hope it wasn't too hard. I hope I didn't overcomplicate a, a relatively um, easy topic. And uh, we'll test it out tomorrow and give it a run. See ya.